And you want to tap, 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 tap that paint. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew, we're the Crafty Lumberjacks. Welcome back to Handmade. If you've been watching a lot of our projects lately, you know we've been stenciling a lot. Yes, and stenciling is a great way to add a personal touch to any project. It may seem intimidating, but if you have the right skills and the right tools, you can stencil just about anything. We'll show you the tools of the trade. So let's talk application tools. You can use a brush, a sponge, a dabber or a roller. Yeah, ideally you want something with a flat top that's good for dabbing or swirling. Uh, we like to use a natural bristle brush, um, but just a tip. Before you start stenciling, you wanna make sure you get any of these loose fibers off of there. Yeah, you really don't want that to screw up your work. Oop, did you see that one fly? I did. There it goes. Uh, so let's talk, let's talk, let's talk adhesive Let's talk spray. adhesive spray. I mean, or right. Let's talk adhesive hey, Let's talk gonna... adhesive. <laughs> all right. Let's talk adhesive. You're yeah. gonna wanna use something for your stencil to stick to whatever surface you're working on. Mm -hmm. um, Cause uh, you want nice clean lines yeah, and this... you also, oh. Sorry. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, what, what do you need to say? No, nothing. I thought, okay, go. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk adhesive. You wanna use an adhesive for your stencil to stick to the surface of whatever you're working with. Uh, for that, you can either use a spray adhesive. Painter's tape. Or they even sell stencils with adhesive backing. This is gonna prevent from bleeding from any of your paint and also give you nice clean lines. Let's talk paint. A multi-surface craft paint will work for most projects. Just check the back to make sure it will work for your material. But the one paint you don't want to use is oil-based mm. paint. Oh no, you better don't. No. Oh. If you use an oil-based paint, you're really not going to get any clean lines. It's most likely to bleed right through the stencil. All right, let's start with our first project. We're gonna start with a tea towel. Since we're stenciling on a tea towel, we're gonna be using fabric paint because it is a piece of fabric. Yeah, and we're gonna be using a stencil, but we're gonna add some spray adhesive to the back to get it nice and stuck down. <laughs> <laughs> that made sense, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and we're gonna be adding spray adhesive to our stencil to make it nice and secure. Perfect, a little goes a long way. You really don't want to oversaturate it. We're gonna let it sit for just a couple seconds. So it gets a little tacky. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> I think that's, that's pretty good. I think so too. And now we're just gonna place it down. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. So since stenciling is basically a dry brush technique, uh, you don't really want to dip your brush right into the paint bottle. We're gonna use a paint tray here just to pour a little paint on it. Yeah, and you really don't need a lot of paint. That's the great thing about stenciling. Is that good? Yeah, I think that's all right. Yeah, that will work. So I'm going to just add a little bit of paint. And you want to tap, 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 tap that paint. I am offloading a lot of that paint. And it will cause bleeding if you add too much paint. OK. That looks great. As you can see, I'm really taking my time and I'm starting from the edge and moving in towards the center. Think about working in layers. You don't wanna start with a heavy layer first. You wanna start light and then build up the paint as you go. And you don't wanna to push too hard. Yeah, and if you notice in some of our other videos, this is exactly how we stenciled on our bird feeder. We yes. also did the um, iron on freezer paper for our beard wax. And then also our famous jute rug. Oh. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Actually, that came out really cute. Yeah, it's really cute. Oh my God, back in the 80s, my mom used to stencil everything. Everything. The walls, the whole thing. It was crazy. We should talk about that. I feel like that's... <laughs> all the baskets were stenciled. The bathroom, the yeah. living room, all over. <laughs> She even did like a whole panel like across her bedroom. All right, you wanna wait to peel your stencil. You wanna let the paint set a little bit because if you remove the stencil too quickly while the paint is wet, you might bleed, it might not have a clean line. It's not worth it. So I think we waited a, a minute or two because this yeah. paint dries very quickly. Um, let's see how it turned out. I like to, to peel nice and slowly. Yes, please. Four hands for this tiny little stencil. Oh my gosh. Oh. <gasps> My wow. gosh. Wow. Look. Tools of the trade. Good. Tools of the trade. 
looks really good. It does. Now, if you have imperfections, don't worry. Stenciling will never be 100% perfect, but that's also what comes with the look. Yes, it's part of its charm. Absolutely. Another great way to stencil on fabric is by using freezer paper. You can either purchase freezer paper online or at your local grocery store. We printed our image right on our freezer paper, and now I'm just gonna cut it off with our craft knife. Cut it out. We printed our image on freezer paper, and now I'm just gonna cut it off with our craft knife. Wait, what? Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> cut it out, okay. <laughs> we printed our image on freezer paper, and now I'm just gonna cut it out with our craft knife. You wanna use the same technique, dabbing and offloading your brush, and then Tap, 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 tapping it on your fabric. And then you can peel it right off and voila. Oh, too many taps. You can even stencil on a rougher material like we did on our jute rope rug. And for this, you're gonna notice that you're not gonna get a lot of detail. So pick a stencil that's a little more basic. You can still get a lot of color, but you're not gonna get those fine lines that you would when you were working on just plain fabric. So we talked about stenciling on fabrics. Now let's talk about stenciling on harder materials. We're using a stencil that's cut out of vinyl. We cut it with a cutting machine. But if you don't have a vinyl stencil, you can use the spray adhesive. You just wanna make sure that it's tacked down really well since it is a slick surface. We used the same technique. We dipped our brush in the paint and then we tapped off some of the paint and then did a light layer, tap, 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 until we got the look that we liked. Yeah, you definitely don't want to overload the paint. It will definitely bleed. A little dab will do ya. All right, now cleaning your stencils. Now to clean your stencils, a good way to do it is to grab a cookie sheet and pour some hot water. And then you can lay your stencil right in and let it soak. You can let it soak overnight or just for a couple of hours and that will help get that dry paint off. Yeah, stencils are made to be used over and over and over yep. again. So you don't wanna use your stencil once and then toss it, clean it. So you wanna go nice and lightly just so you don't damage any of those details. And as you can see, this is coming right off. Ideally, you wanna let this air dry, but you can also, if you're working quickly and you got, gotta keep stenciling, you can dab it with a, a dry paper towel until it is completely dry. Now, if you're doing a repeating pattern with your stencil, you can take that stencil, wash it right away and dry it and then keep on using it between coats. It's important to store your stencil nice and flat, but if your stencils do bend, don't worry, you can fix that. Put them under a heavy pile of books or you can even lightly um, bend them the opposite direction and that will help them lay nice and flat. You really don't want a bent stencil because you will get a lot of bleeding. <laughs> Well, we hope our tips helped you become a stenciling pro. We wanna hear about your next project in a comment below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.